Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today, April 9th, is the birthday of two of the wives of our elders. Two, the wives of two of our elders. <laughs> They only each have one wife. Uh, Ifeoma Awaka, is, it's her birthday today. And Karen Joya, it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Ife. Happy birthday, Karen. Uh, you both looked wonderful yesterday. I'm, for me, it's yesterday. Uh, I'm recording this on Monday. But on Sunday, you guys look fantastic. Had a great time with you guys at the um, potluck supper. And it was good to see you both. Uh, God bless you today on your birthday. May you know that you are loved by God and loved by his church and his people. So thank you so much for all that you do among us and also for supporting your husbands who are elders in the church. Uh, we love you and appreciate you. Uh, you do fantastic things. So thanks for being part of us. Um, I'm recording this on Monday, but uh, so for me, yesterday was Sunday and we had a great time at that uh, potluck. Thank you so much again. Wearing my Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary sweatshirt that you guys gave me as a, a, a anniversary present. So thank you so much uh, for that. I love it. Uh, I've never had a Gordon Conwell sweatshirt, so I'm, I'm very excited about that and uh, enjoy wearing it here. On Sunday, I preached out of Psalm 8 and Psalm 8 uh, takes a look at uh, the glory and the majesty of God and that God is, is glorious and maj majestic through his name and through his uh, role as the creator of all things. And um, the, there's this great sequence. Well, I'll, I'll point, go to it here, right? David, the psalmist says, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? David goes out and looks at the night sky and sees the moon and the stars and the vastness of the universe, and he is blown away by the majesty and the goodness and the care of God. He is, as I talked about on Sunday, he is uh, lifted up by the majesty of creation, but he's also humbled by the glory of creation. And I said on Sunday that, uh, there's, that the people of Israel did something very different when they looked at the heavens. The nations around them looked at the heavens, they looked at the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they saw them as majestic and glorious. And so they reasoned that those must be gods. And they worshiped the sun, and they worshiped the moon, and they worshiped the stars. You see this in the Greek and Roman pantheons, right? Uh, Zeus, the god of thunder, right? And you have uh, you have the the, the god of uh, you know, the gods of the, the sun, and the moon, and the stars. Athena, I think, was was the goddess of the moon. Um, and they all were sort of uh, characteristically connected with heavenly bodies. Uh, Zeus connected with the planet Jupiter, for example, in the sky. Um, but it wasn't just the Greeks and the Romans. It was, you know, everyone in the ancient Near East. They they looked at the the stars and they and the and the moon and the sun and they said these are things to be worshipped. People of Israel did not do that. The people of Israel, thanks to the revelation that they had through Scripture, uh, they, in fact, worshipped the God who created the sun, the moon, and the stars. So in, the, in their minds. The sun, the moon, and the stars are majestic things that point to a greater reality, that point to the reality of the God who created them. And this tendency that human beings have to worship the created thing rather than the creator is a dangerous thing in the Bible. The Bible presents this, this tendency towards what we call idolatry, as being a, a spiritually dangerous thing for us. It's presented in the book of Romans as an exchange. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 1. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes 
namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they're without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. There's a lot in this Romans passage. I'm not going to unpack all of it, but um, it's, it's a very key passage because in this passage, Paul is explaining why people don't worship the one true God. That people would rather exchange worship of the one true God for worship of created things. Uh, he says images resembling mortal man. Okay, I think there he's talking about the gods of the nations in a lot of ways, um, who are often depicted in statues that looked human or, or at least humanoid, <laughs> right? Um, but also the worship of self is, I think, also there. This idea that, that, that uh, I am the center of the universe, that I am the one who uh, makes, has the right to make the decisions on how to run my life. I am the, the captain of my soul, to use the words from a famous poem. Exchanging the glory of the invisible God for images resembling mortal men and also uh, birds and animals and creeping things, right? Uh, worshiping the creature, the creature, the creation rather than the creator. And this is a tendency that human beings have. We see it in, in cultures all around the world. Um, we see it even in our own selves. We would rather, the, the, the concept of an invisible almighty God who is the God over all the universe, is a daunting concept. It is a frightening concept because if we're responsible to such a God who is holy and good and just, then how can any of us stand in his presence? No, far better to uh, worship gods who are small and petty, to worship ourselves. We're easily pleased with ourselves. Uh, far better for us to uh, put aside the truth about who God is and worship instead our conception of God. Um, and that is the challenge, right? That's the challenge because uh, we are, um, we're drawn to worship something that is less than God. And we wind up worshiping, in that instance, a lie. The lie that this thing is worthy of my worship. Now, when we talk about worship, I'm not just talking about singing songs or going to a church service devoted to it. Very few of us go to a church service devoted to ourselves. Uh, but we do build cathedrals around ourselves. We do uh, uh, pamper ourselves, serve ourselves. We do consider ourselves above everybody else. We do uh, believe that we are able to uh, competently uh, direct our own path in this world. When that's the, those are the elements of worship, right? Who is the center of your world? Is it you or is it God? Who is the one who has the right to tell you how to make your decisions, how to spend your money, how to vote? Who's the one who's able to direct you about how to conduct your marriage, how to parent? Right? Who's the one who is able to direct you about what you're able to watch on TV or see in the movies, the music you listen to, foods you eat, how much of it you eat? Who is the one who has the right to tell you how to live your life? Well, I'm the only one who has the right to tell me how to live my life. Well, then you're worshiping yourself. You're putting yourself at the center of your universe. And ultimately, you are not big enough. <laughs> Ultimately, 
you do not deserve that worship. You are not competent to direct your own path. You are not almighty. You are not omniscient. You are not omnipresent. You do not care and love as much as God does. So you will invariably wreck it if you are your own God. You'll wreck yourself. You'll wreck your life. You'll wreck others. Um, that is the way things go. And that's what the Apostle Paul says here, right? That God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. And he'll give examples as he goes on in the chapter, but the examples could be multiplied. He gives an example of a particularly Gentile sin next. And then he flips the tables and says, well, you Jews who are criticizing the Gentiles for doing these things, you're doing stuff that's just as bad. Uh, doesn't matter, Jew or Gentile, if you're worshiping something that is less than God, including yourself, you are participating in idolatry and the result will be the shipwreck of your soul. Do not worship the creature. Do not worship creation. Worship the creator who made that creation. Um, he is the one who is worthy of our praise. He's the one who is able to direct our lives. He's the one to whom we should listen and give authority uh, in everything that we, we have and everything that we are. That is the great exchange. Uh, we have, for so many years, exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And what God calls us to do is exchange the lie for the truth. That's what it means to submit your life to God through Jesus Christ, exchanging the lie for a truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you and you alone are worthy of our worship and our praise. We center our lives around you and you alone. You have the authority to tell us uh, everything that we need to know about ourselves and, about, and direct our, our paths according to your way. God, I pray that you would show us the areas of our lives where we've exchanged the truth about you for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. We've made that exchange. We make that exchange every day when we sin. Help us, Lord, to exchange the lie for the truth and to follow you, the good and perfect God, through Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. Lord, I lift up uh, Ifeoma and Karen today on their birthdays. Please bless them, encourage them, and strengthen them. May they know that they are loved by you and loved by your people. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray your blessing on every person within the sound of my voice. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.